of ceremony tonight is Mary Holden Violet. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes. All right. Yes. I've been calling the violin all yesterday. <laughs> but um, I certainly uh, welcome each of you. And we're going to follow the program that's printed primarily. Thank you, Hunley. Yes, I'm Mary Holden, and um, uh, I am just so excited and delighted to be here this evening to our 50th, I cannot believe it, 50th anniversary of the years that we've been out of dear old council. Um, you know, I had, I've heard of these things and I really didn't, you know, I, I, I never really planned to come because, you know, each time there was something that came up, I said, you know, I, I'm too fat and I'm, I, don't, I don't look right. Um, you know, let me just do a little bit of something else. And, and of course, each year got worse. And so, uh, you know, I thought I'd better hurry up and get here now and you would accept me any kind of way I was able to get myself in here. So I am really uh, grateful to be here and, and glad to see each one of you. It is a privilege to be here. I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be able to be here. You know, those are two different things. And, uh, you know, it just means a lot to have people to come to something like this uh, and have, and Mr. Kellum used to say, you know, like you don't have no gumption. You didn't have to have enough gumption to come to something like this because sometimes you're not invited. They don't want to see you. We're pretty much going to adhere to the program, as, as Hundley said. But one of, the, one of the first things that, you know, I want you to know is that I am just impressed with this, with this committee. In case you're wondering how I happened to get up here, when I was working, you know, the one who didn't show up at the meeting was the one who, you know, got a few duties that they didn't expect to get. And so, of course, I wasn't at the meeting, and here I am. So, you know, I'm here because, uh, you know, I was out. And I, I like to pull this trick on other folks, but now it is on me. It is a little bit hot up here. But, uh, you know, we're going to move through the program, and I'm just so happy to see this, these teachers here and, and glad to see that you wanted to come. And for those I understand, uh, we, we have Mr. Hill in, the, um, in, a, in an institution, um, a nursing facility. And I want to remind us that uh, to, to go by and see people when we can. I am very well acquainted with sickness, and it's a lonely place. And uh, it is just good to reach out, and I felt good when I would look up and see my friend sitting in the chair. Uh, I didn't know she was there. Uh, I was in and out of the the, the medication and stuff, and I didn't know she was there, and, I, and sometimes I felt like nobody saw me. So, you know, uh, let us not forget those of uh, uh, us who are not here and who, uh, you know, really nursed us and, and put up with us and guided us and, and comforted us. I am proud to tell people about my instructors. They were excellent. Each one of you, you know, has been an inspiration, you know, in my life and in all my life. So. We'll just go ahead with the uh, program, and uh, next on the agenda here, I see, you know, I'm kind of used to meetings. <laughs> next on our program here is uh, Mr. Harold Eugene Pulley, our class vice president. So welcome to you, Harold, and proceed. Thank you. Hello, old folks. <laughs> <laughs> Lost in the 60s tonight. These lyrics are by... Ronnie Millsap. Close your eyes, baby. Follow my heart. Call on the memories here in the dark. We'll let the magic take us away. Back to the feelings we shared when they played in the still of the night. Remember that, right? Hold me, darling. Hold me tight. Ooh, 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 ooh. Should do, should we do? Do. So real, 
So right. Lost in the 60s tonight. 50 years ago, we were probably contemplating our first major step in life. We had choices of the military, the working force, marriage, and college. But 50 years later, today, we are talking about our grandchildren and how awesome they are. Our names have been changed to Nana, Papa, Grandmama, and Granddaddy. <laughs> From all of the grandmothers and grandfathers of the class of 1962, we welcome you. You know, we, we only have a, a, a few precious moments to share. We only have a few precious hours to share. So let's get lost in the 60s tonight at our sock hop. Let's call on our memories so that we can remember and re reminisce about those fabulous 60s in our times together. Our memory books are packed, so let's swim in the sea of nostalgia. Let the magic take us away, back to the feelings we shared when they played in the still of the night. It was during those fabulous sixes that we went from childhood to adulthood. Close your eyes. Recall, recall when we first entered Council High School, the excitement and uncertainties as a freshman and how we progressed over the years right to being confident queens and kings as seniors. Remember the excitement at basketball games? Recall when we paid our dimes to get into a sock hop in the gym? Also recall when we, we hung out at the Sugar Bowl, Princess Theater, the Sis Trunk, Big and Seas, <laughs> Pool Hall, when a 57 ship was Air One's dream car to cruise, peel out or lay rubber, when we went steady, when we dreamed of, of the man in the moon, not a man on the moon, when we described our music with numbers 45 or 78, not letters like CD, iPod, or MP3, when a sale was something we learned about in biology class, Mr. Combs class, not a device we answered or made calls on. And when a blackberry was a fruit you picked to eat in one of your grandmama's cobblers. <laughs> Not a high-tech smartphone. In those 60s, we wore our hair with a flip up, do a ponytail, duck tail, coat bodies. Now some of us have less hair and what we do have <laughs> has turned gray or white, or maybe in some cases, even turned loose. <laughs> Instead of singing, where's Huntley? Instead of singing, tonight is tonight, <laughs> the Watusi, <laughs> I found a love up on the roof, Charlie Brown, a handyman. Now we're probably seeing a home, something, something more moderate like, grow old alone with me, the best is yet to be. <laughs> we came of age in 1960s when rock and roll and the space age were being born. Little, little did we know back in those innocent years of the 60s what a world of change they have had of, of us. A world of high-speed technology, space travel, advancement in the computers, and several other changes. Little did we know the opportunities would be afforded, or the paths of our lives would take, or the people we will encounter, or the impact we will have on their lives, and the impact that they have on our lives. Why is the high school so important? It is important for the simple reason 
that your roots are formed there. Face it, when we went to high school, that's home, the site of our homecoming of, of age, and where adult life started. And the people, these are the indelible faces of those who started life with us. Why is my affection so all, <clears throat> for all these people so extravagant? For some reasons, nobody forgets their high school years. This is the place I grew up. This is my spiritual home. This was the place where I was safe. This is the ground where the seeds of later life got sowed. These were the people who were with me, which I forged, who I was, and what I would become. These people were the loving teachers of all the really important lessons of living and of life. To forget your high school years is to amputate a major part of you. It isn't over, of course. The members of the class of 1962, you teach me yet. You teach me now of the importance of holding life in reverence. You teach me the critical importance of enjoying the moment and living well in it. You teach me the strength of humility, the, the fertility of pride, and the emptiness of achieving money and power status at the price of soul. And most of all, you teach me gratitude. God bless you all. About 50 years later, some of the, the physical structure of Council High has been torn down. It's gone. But bricks and mortar, they, they don't make a school. You know, we, the 1962 graduates of William Hooper Council High School, live on a tribute and legacy to our parents, to our principal and teachers, and to each other. We are fortunate together tonight to celebrate and remember our time. I changed that word to fortunate. We are blessed to be here tonight, you know, to share everything with our classmates and friends at Council High School. I want to thank each of you for being here. Your presence will enrich the entire reunion experience for all of us. I want to acknowledge Remember our classmates who are not here tonight, they are missing for various and sundry reasons. Some are caught up with various life demands that prohibit their attendance, and some may simply be too far away to make attendance feasible. And of course, some of our classmates who have passed on among these are some who love this class with a deep passion, who always attended several different uh, uh, affairs and would have surely been here tonight if it had been possible. Now, I really want to thank the committee who put all this together for us. Could you please stand? Okay, thank you for your contributions in making the, this 50 reunion truly outstanding. Councilor Tigers and friends, again, we welcome you. We hope that you have a wonderful time as we visit with classmates and rekindle old friendships. Thank you. Let us pray. Grateful Father, we so thankful that you have allowed us to come together again. 50 years of things that we have gone through. It's a blessing for us to be here, to fellowship, to smile. Father, we thank you for the committee. 
We thank you for every class member. We thank you, God, for the legends, our teachers, who has instilled in us the principles of education. And God, we thank for every family that's represented here tonight. We ask you to bless us in a special way. Bless those that are here in mind, but are hurting in heart. You know who they are. And bless those, God, who could not attend this occasion. And we're grateful for this time. We give you the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory. We thank you. Thank God. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Kenneth Brown, class of 62. Proud of it. Uh, this occasion marks 50 years of celebration for the graduating class of 1962. Tonight provides an opportunity to communicate, reminisce, and uh, develop a new friendship as well as come together with friends and guests. Let us make this evening a pleasant a uh, harmonious and enjoyable occasion. Sit back, relax, and, and have fun. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to take this time to acknowledge our great, great, teachers who taught at Council High School. We thank all of you for your love, guidance, and life's lessons. When I call your name, you may stand or raise your hand, whichever you prefer. Miss Teresa DeShields. Ms. Evangeline Spielman. Mrs. Maureen Davis Cathy. Ms. Carmelita Gandhi. Mr. Walter Joyner. And Mr. Willie Mingo Clark. Thank you very much. Now what we'd like to do is to have someone from each table to introduce your guests. And if you graduated from Council High, would you please state the year that you graduated? We can begin with the first table. I am Hunter Bastard with my wife, Virginia Pitt. <laughs> my name is Harold Foley. My name is Kenneth Brown. This is my wife, Mary. Olivia Brandon. <laughs> okay, could we go to the Okay. I'm yes. Walter Lacey from the other school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Lenia Curry, Thank you. I'm James Gunner, the other half, but either Bernie Clark. Okay, could we could we go to the next table, please?
I'm Maureen Davis Cassie, class of 1946. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am the wife of Jerry Well, so all y'all know who I am. I'm on their rights, and I wasn't born back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to. 
would just say thank you. <laughs> Well, since I'm, since I'm here and I, I feel like I can interrupt at any time, I, I want to give, um, I, I guess I've sort of uh, preempted her, but I wanted to especially recognize Carol Howard Scott. Uh, I know you're getting ready to get up, Carol, and just sort of say something, but I want everybody to know that Carol and her family, uh, I lived next to for many years, and uh, Carol had a blue bicycle that I tell you I rode the tires off of it. I don't think she got to ride it, did you, Carol? Uh, maybe they bought it for me. Huh? <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, uh, she's just dear to me. Her mother, Mrs. Howard, Mrs. Samantha Howard, uh, still uh, communicate with me. And uh, you're just so special to me, Carol, I, I recall uh, you really kept me in style. You know, you kept me in style with the, the, the clothes and the, the things, and so you just gave me my sense of style here. So it's all from Carol. You know, you started this stuff here, and I've never forgotten it. So, you know, you're just, uh, uh, just a wonderful uh, friend uh, and mentor uh, to me. So, Carol. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, our next uh, person on the uh, agenda, Dr. Geraldine, is it, is it? Yes, Dr. Geraldine Joyner Thornton, uh, whom I'm delighted to, th is here tonight. I was, I was out once when I was in Las Vegas, and I visited uh, with, uh, Geraldine and her husband, um, I was sick at the time, and I'm so glad that they, her husband was able to help me. They took me out to, to dinner, and they had all the trimmings and stuff, and I had always wanted to make sure I got back, but I wanted to say thank you publicly for, for your uh, delightful sponsoring of me out there. I made sure I told Mrs. Turner about how you know great y'all were to me, and we had a great time palling around in the, with the lovely drinks. I still have, uh, you know, all of our, I have a dozen glasses of, I think they were empty when they gave them to me, but I still have a dozen glasses. We did all the casinos up, so I'm glad you still have a voice that you can sing with us. I still sing, and I'm still with you guys. Is there a mic up here? How are you? Hi, Miss Mayor. What is this? Okay, while she's figuring out what key I want to sing this in because I am an alto, I need to let you guys know that I did finish Council High School in the year 1962. I used to do things in Huntsville that involved my grandmother's house and my house. My grandmother lived at 302 Pulaski Pike in Huntsville, Alabama. It had a coal burning heater and an oil heater in it. And I had family chores. And my family chores every evening involved me carrying scuttles of coal into my grandmother's house. I had a big, big job that involved family chores that was very grueling and taxful. So when I would come to school sometimes, I didn't always have my homework. I wouldn't have had time. I was too busy doing other things. So I was talking with Harold yesterday and he said to me, what did you do when you left school sometimes? And I said, well, sometimes when I left school, I go home and I start dinner. Everyone was the first in the house to start dinner. So I was cooking from like the fifth grade on or fourth grade on, I was always cooking. And from, aside from that, I took care of my grandmother as much as I could. And on a really bad night, when things were not just right with me, 
my mom would send me from my house to her house to spend the night with my grandmother. And my grandmother used to like for me to do something, like 9 p.m. She'd say, Jerry, get out of the bed and go and make me a cake. And I said, a what? A cake. She says, just go in the kitchen and there's a box of cake on the stove. Go put it together and put it in the stove. I said, big mama, I need to be studying for Miss Turner's class. Well, you can do it later, she said. So I was kind of a B, C student at Council High because I had chores. And my chores went on right through the 12th grade. They never let up. So I left Council High. I went to Howard University with my cousin Nora. And when my cousin Nora and I got on the train to go to Howard University, we got all the way into the train station. And in the train station, my brother Nora and I got separated. So he, I think he went to the men's room and I went to the ladies' room and I came back and I couldn't find my cousin Nora. So I just got a taxi cab and I went, to, went ahead and went to Howard University. And he got evidently another taxi cab and went on off to school. But from that day forward, from the time that we got on the train to leave Huntsville, Alabama, I never saw my cousin Nora again in life. He died one day in his 40s, and I never, ever saw him again. And I don't know why I threw that in, because I think we were just very close. And I think he was an Victorian, wasn't he, in our class or something like this? Well, from somewhere. He was one of the top students, though. He was a third. He was a what? Third. He was a third. third. Okay. So anyway, though, I went off to school, and I found out one day that I did always well in the strange subject, which was chemistry. So I would tutor students after I went to college. I did transfer from Howard to Tennessee State. I'm a Tennessee State graduate, and I left Tennessee State and went to Meharry Medical College, and I became a dentist. And I've been a dentist now for 40 years. But when I left uh, Howard and moved to Nashville, Tennessee, I had to get closer to home because my mom just was just worrying me about being too far away from home. So I had to always try uh, to study away from her. She felt like if you read a book too long, you're hurting your eye. If you're looking at a microscope, you have to stop peeking into that hole, honestly. What are you doing? Stop doing that. Turn off the lights and let's all go to bed. So I found that if I was studying, I had to stay away from, from my mom. And so I went to Tennessee State where I graduated from there. And then I uh, ended up going to Meharry. I graduated from there. I did an internship at Mount Sinai Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. And I worked in Chicago after getting married at um, Mount Sinai Hospital for a while, then Garfield Fell Hospital for a while, then Presbyterian St. Louis for a while, and then at Cook County. And I left Cook County and told my husband one day, can't stay in Chicago, it's too cold here, I just can't take the cold weather. Plus, I had kind of a child, form of childhood arthritis, and so I couldn't, I couldn't handle the weather. So then I think back, I reminisce about all of the wonderful, wonderful teachers and all the wonderful things that happened to us along the way. We had the best teachers at Council High School. Thank you, thank you, thank you. to black and white fountains and toilets and back doors to accomplishing a lot of things. And we thought we lived to see something that we thought we'd never see. And I work right now for the Democratic Party because we did get our black president. And I want you guys to promise me and tell at least 25 people, get up and go and vote. Let's put Obama back in. So stand with me and sing. Lift our voice and sing in honor of ourselves and in honor of our president of this United States. Stand with me and let's sing it.
Let us bow our heads, please, for prayer. It's not loud. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a most beautiful time. We thank you for 50 years of your blessings. We ask you, dear Father, as we partake of our food tonight, that we remember that you have provided everything that we've needed up until this time. We thank you. And thank you is a simple word, but we just want to say thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do right now, and we thank you for what you're going to do later on. We ask you, dear Father, to bless this food. Let it be nourishment to our body. And as children would say, all of us are now going to say our grace. So let us say our grace. God is Oh no, adults, the grace, God is good. Come on, adults. How many people? All right, let's go again. We're thanking God for our food. Let's start over. God is grace, God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hands we all are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. Amen. Amen. 